Welcome back. Quick unboxing. This is a Tunzi accessory. And it is all their equipment it has funky numbers. So this one is the 3162.13. And we just do a quick unwrapping of this and we'll show it on the tank. Um, I bought two of them because I have two wave boxes and it's basically a replacement for the um, intake of the box. This one has um, the strainer so that water can come from the surface through the wave maker box and um, out uh, discharged at the bottom. So let's take a look at the tank. Which is doing well. The Let's see here, livestock update, real quick, the uh, cleaner shrimp, my second one, um, died, it, um, I think it was due to a sharp increase in the salinity, um, I forgot to plug in my auto top off, and I keep the salinity right at 35, and it, um, without the auto top off on, this tank evaporates about a gallon and a half or so a day, give or take, and the salinity um, shoots up pretty quickly. So I think that's what the cause was. Um, I'm not sure if the fire shrimp, I saw it once after I placed it in to the tank, but it did take care of the Aptasia um, that was right here on that piece of rock. So. The fire shrimp may still be in the tank, it may not, um, depending on if it survives the increase in salinity. Other than that, all the fish are doing well, it's the same fish that are in the tank. Um, no new corals to speak of, and it's really about just getting everything, everything is in cruise control, it's really about um, stability and consistency for me right now. I am looking... Uh, sometime early 2016 to get a dosing pump and bring that online and let's see the bubble tip anemone has moved up into that spot um, so it's starting to really like the area is still the clownfish still have not really located or aware of an enemy in the tank um, these two are guarding um, their territory which is basically the center of the tank and then it so happens that the other um, the one oscillaris clownfish that's over here um, doesn't go to the other side of the tank so um, the heater is on the other side of the tank up here in the display and there's one in the sump and I think they probably the temperature on this side is probably a little bit lower um, the heaters are set to 79 so it's probably 78 78.5 you know to 79 and a half depending on where you're taking the temperature in the tank but the purpose of this video is to show the overflow boxes so let me switch that over and we'll take a look right now. The top of the box is, if you can see it there, there we go. Um, it has no way for water to come in as a placement and most tanks folks have at least two power heads um, some three or four um, the two way boxes are running the Twinzy uh, 6055s which are controllable through the controller and then the two side pumps are 60 95s 
And uh, the nice part about the wave box is during the day, it will produce a nice wave. And then I can also, by adding this accessory, have it move some of the surface water down towards the lower areas of the tank. Side view out of the box. And the reasons I went with them over other pumps is I like the fact that um, it's a way of getting pumps low into the water without actually seeing the wire. Um, my goal is to organize the wires back there so that you don't see any wires other than the single wire that will be coming from the 1695s. And the heater, I like having a heater in a display tank simply because it helps um, keep the water temperature up here a little bit more stable. Um, I'm thinking about moving it back down to the sump, uh, but we'll see. I have um, some Black Friday orders should be arriving in the next couple of days, and during that time, the sump is due for its quarterly water change. Most of my water changes are from the display tank but every three to four months, I will do a 30 to 40 gallon water chain from the sump. And yeah, let's go ahead and get this on to the wave box and we'll be right back. 